know, large scale, global, uh, what's happened so far in other countries and, you know, what can you learn from that? So what I thought I'd put down is, you know, what's driven large scale solar? How do we define large scale solar? So one of the analysts, a team of worldwide analysts, and we look at what's going on in the solar industry and try to make sense of it. I try to forecast as well. So just what we're going to run through is, I want to really define large scale because I've heard a lot of different definitions. And um, there isn't actually, isn't a term that is used commonly. It's, um, it kind of comes up now and again, which is large, bigger, and small. You know, large scale solar for us is, is photovoltaic. But you know, there's still a lot of push on solar thermal um, in certain countries, in the Middle East. So you have to remember that you know, other people will think of large scale solar and you see these large you know, concentrated solar thermal plants, uh, lots of reflecting mirrors. So that's, it's not, that's just using the heat from the sun, it's not using um, PV. The, the other thing that really does, so you've got um, residential, okay? So that's clearly not large scale. But a lot of building mm -hmm. mine is large scale, and we're going to come onto this in a few minutes because it's it's we're kind of starting to touch on the fact that there's a lot of building mine opportunity. There's other countries that have been through the large scale loop, and for a whole bunch of reasons, they're having to put large scale on top of buildings. So they never intended to do it in the first place. So you've got somebody like IKEA, for example, that's installing you know towards 40 megawatts on the rooftops because. They're saying, well, by 2020, we want to have, be completely self-consuming and we want to be like carbon neutral. So, you know, when you're talking about 40 million <coughs> of rooftops, that's large scale. Um, most of the, all the large scale, all, all the solar we have in this country, almost like 99% of it is based on um, crystalline silicon panels, as opposed to, you know, silicon panels. And the reason for this is that um, sheep like the blue color uh, as opposed to the way all morning together. When I look at the big differences in you know the residential markets globally and then the large scale markets, um, size, funding mechanisms, phasings and timelines, um, permitting, um, environmental huge difference. Um, the whole supply chain as well that's used in the, in the residential non and the large scale, uh, the whole risk assessment, the components used are very different. Largely because the risk assessment is different, you tend to get much higher quality components used in a large scale. Uh, grid connections, role of utilities. Um, and also, you know, a big difference, how, how much you can quickly have an impact on um, renewable energy portfolios. That's actually the big driver for solar um, at the moment. Um, what's driving large scale solar? Um, the, the, I had to think about this, and really the number one thing I came up with was that it's Really, the fact that large-scale solar can quickly have an impact on government's long-term renewable um, targets. Once you take away renewable targets, solar has a hard time existing anywhere. Um, so it's always, and if you look at the US, classic example, you've got a whole bunch of states that have been left on their own to decide whether or not they want to put through what they call an RPS, or renewable portfolio standard. The states that have it drive renewables, the ones that don't have no renewable, almost no renewable, no solar. So without the re a renewable target, so that's why you know you can talk about 20 gigawatts by 2020 as being a long time away, you can talk about 2030 being a long time away, but without those targets you've taken away the fundamental driver for a lot of renewables and especially solar. Um, how much, and so the, the, the requirement can be a government target, but it can also be a legal mandate to the to utility companies. And when it becomes a legal mandate to the utility companies to have renewables, then again, that's a massive driver for quick uptake, up, uptake of large scale. Um, some countries are looking at it as a means of you know, independence um, from, from foreign imports, um, companies independence from grid. Um, countries like US are looking at it from an energy security perspective. Uh, one of the, the big things that's happening now is a lot more drive from a commercial, large scale commercial rooftop uh, for self consumption. So this is really, you know, they're kind of hedge against um, electricity prices. Um, this was just really a slide on, on um, how much I kind of put large scale as a percentage of global PV. So this is looking at cumulative. So in 2012, PV industry, uh, 29 gigawatts globally. Um, 
it as a cumulative, it, it reached 100 gigawatts. So 2012 reached 100 gigawatt mark. So you can see the amount globally. Um, so what really started a residential fit driven, European fit driven, initially in Japan, rooftop driven, and, and we'll go back to 2000. Really, it's been the, the large scale that's, that's driven the, the push towards the 100 gigawatts. And then when you go out to 2017, basically arriving at another 250 gigawatts in a five year period. Um, the majority of which now becomes large scale. So you can see how large scale, from a global perspective, is now the big driver. So in terms of the UK, as far as I'm concerned, the UK market only exists if I can see it on a plane and I'm arriving in the country. And um, this was um, Exeter um, a couple of days ago, taken through my plane there. So that, that is the criteria. It, it doesn't apply if you fly to, to, to Delhi or to Shanghai. Um, nothing. Um, I just wanted to get this up um, because basically we have this two and a half gigawatts now installed in the UK. Um, so you can just actually see here um, the impact of the last couple, well, last quarter and also this quarter in the ground mount segment driving the growth. Um, so you've got uh, you know the fit residential um, really kicking in. You've got this kind of you know initial ground mount um, in 2011, um, so this is fit-driven large scale. This is all <coughs> driven large scale here. So um, you know that's that's a that's a curve. Yes, that's a gradient you want to keep. Um, so this um, this is actually looking at 2012. So what I wanted to do was uh, pull up uh, globally where the large scale demand was coming from. And it's not just utilities. That's just like commercial utility. Um, uh, ground mount, uh, large uh, building mount. Uh, so there's 16 and a half gigawatts out of that 29 last year. And if you look at where that was driven from, um, China, Germany, US, Italy, and then um, you know you've got all the other countries contributing a, a smaller amount. But really, it's it was China, Germany, and the US were the big driver of large scale last year. Um, but that's that's going to change. If we look five years out, um, so. Globally, you know, we're projecting uh, 250 um, gigawatts of solar in the next five years, and this is how much we're projecting is going to be ground out. It's almost 50% of global demand um, is going to be ground out, and then you can see here this is the rooftop non-residential. So most of this is really large-scale rooftop. So large scale, if you like, if you include the whole ground out and then all the large rooftop. Um, is you know, getting towards um, you know seventy percent of global demand, and then you have the residential now, which is less than a quarter. So we're ready for our three minutes going around the world. So, um, Germany. Um, so uh, Germany basically was driven by large scale, but what they did was um, they took away the, the the funding for large scale uh, above ten megawatt, and that virtually you know switched off. Or secondly, they decreased that segment overnight. You can see going from 32% of their demand down to 17 just within 12 months. So basically, uh, Spain was almost entirely a ground market. market. Um, it's, it's, it's a moratorium and they've really done retroactive steps as well. So that market was completely taken away. You could, the, the economy is just there. You've got a completely different utility structure there as well. Uh, but nonetheless, you've got a lot of people still looking at uh, opportunities, but not really finding the funding yet. Um, then quickly, Belgium and Greece is a couple, an example of a couple of other European countries I just pulled out. Uh, Belgium actually has a lack of uh, ground now, just from a, um, a footprint perspective. Uh, but they've, they've, they've started to try and drive the large scale uh, building now to, to get around that. Uh, Greece was uh, previously ground now um, dominated, but I just brought this up as an example of you know, when this whole financing issue kicks in and just really you know, pulls the market, you can pull the market away quickly. So there's a lot more risk here, obviously, than investing in the UK. Um, US, um, I'm, I'm, I'm a couple of slides in the US because it's actually so important. Um, so large scale is, is really the big driver of the US market, and that's very much state specific. And it really comes down to the states that have got um, RPS standards, and there's a mandate on the utility companies to produce a certain amount through renewables, and that absolutely drives large scale once those legal mandates are in place. Um, but if we look at some of the issues that they're coming up against, it's, it's interesting because some of these are the ones that we're probably yet to even address or know about in, in the UK. Um, 
there's there's issues with, with transmission and grid connection. We'll, we'll see this as we're to some other countries very quickly. Um, so they've been really trying to go big in some of their projects, um, running into a lot of environmental issues as well, trying to get around those. Um, and actually what they're designing is that, you know, maybe it's better not to have like a 500 megawatt plant, but to do, you know, smaller stages of 5, 10, 20 is, is easier. So, you know, just an example, of, you want to know large scale, Topaz, uh, 550 megawatts. Like, that's probably large scale. Um, <laughs> Nine million thin panels. So there's going to be no sheep. <laughs> um, so, uh, but this is actually, you know, these, goes through a lot of phases. Um, it's 50% complete at the moment. Um, but you know, if you want to look at uh, challenges for large scale, um, just you know, have a look at the history of that one. China, um, large scale um, in China. I mean, China market just uh, just you know kind of exploded in the last few years for a whole bunch of reasons. Um, you know, they can invest big time in manufacturing, and you know, one way to have the manufacturing plants keep running is you create your own local demand. So the entire Chinese market is supplied by Chinese manufacturers. Um, so, but basically the, that market has become so big and it's, it's, it's a ground mount market. You know, it hasn't been a ground mount market. Um, 2013, five gigawatts in, in ground mount is going to, is going to go into China. Um, and but what you're, you're seeing there is a lot of the, the, the PV supply chain is investing in that. Because obviously, if, you, if, if you're manufacturing a solar panel, you're going to invest in the, in the, in the, you get involved in the downstream, you get, you're becoming a PC, you get involved in the financing there, then you basically created your own sales, so you can keep your own sales. It's, it's, you can see how a lot of them are getting involved more, more downstream. Uh, RPS standards apply to all utility suppliers, so you see again there, you know, once, this, once it's become legal, um, it, just, it just changes the, the game. But what they're running into is issues related to um, um, a long distance transmission lines, grid availability. So as a result of that, what they've had to do is, is look at how do, how do we get around the issue of the grid connection and then keep the large scale and keep the growth going in the local market. So what they've done there is they're now shifting to large rooftop and distributed generation. And this is the big thing coming in there. So that the percentage that's going to be ground is going to become less and all of a sudden a lot more of the rooftops are being used. In Japan, Japan market is just you know absolutely exploded this year because they brought in kind of after the, the disaster a couple of years ago, it took a little while and then you know they brought in um, fits and actually fits for ground mount, which is um, kind of unusual and they were really attractive. So that's actually just started to drive the market from from this year, a lot of um, megawatt scale uh, ground mount. They do have a, 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 a land constraint uh, <coughs> issues, obviously in the rooftop in Japan, but to a lesser degree on, on the ground. And what's actually happening here is that uh, it's kind of meant the, the lack of competition for the real estate on, on the ground because it's limited. Um, so this is actually starting to increase development costs and they'll probably cut back on the fits as well because they're pretty attractive. But it's not a big market on the ground mind. Uh, India, um, so basically India, again, no surprise, um, almost exclusive ground map. Um, and, you know, a lot of big plans for, for, for growth in India. Um, ground mount is 80% of the, of the PV demand in India, but um, surprise, surprise, um, and infrastructure, transmission lines really presenting the biggest challenge. So what they're looking at now is most should people looking at, um, at, at diversifying towards um, building out for large scale PV. So you can see another, I mean, these are actually the two big trends globally is, you know, issues with um, infrastructure, transmission, um, and then, you know, should we be shifting towards a uh, large scale rooftop? Um, we look at the, the emerging regions because there's a lot happening in, in Latin America, Middle East, and Southeast Asia, the three kind of emerging segments. It's kind of isolated but really big plants. So and if you look at um, Peru, for example, you know, 240 watt megawatt plants gives you the 80 megawatt market overnight. Um, the, um, so what we can see is that large scale is, is, is dominated by PV. But just do remember that some people have this idea about reflecting the heat for the concentrated solar um, by ground mount and also also uh, large scale uh, rooftop. Um, the large scale rooftop really, if I had to pull out the, the big driver, um, it, it really is the countries that have got you know the renewable energy targets and the ones where there's a legal mandate on the utility companies for. Uh, renewable contribution. Remember that number, 200 gigawatts. You think of global PD industry is now 100, just over 100 gigawatts total in the last year. Uh, previously, it was very potential, but really the price. 
drive that large scale rooftop and have the big drivers. Um, so the UK, the two and a half. This is the other number here, again, the number in your head. Um, the whole of 2012 was a, globally was a 29 gigawatt market, but over 60% of that is what we would call large scale. Um, the, and that large scale is going to contribute over 50% towards 70% of this five year 230 gigawatts. Um, challenges. Um, I kind of identified, and I went around the country quickly, but the world quickly. Um, but within that, I did a bunch of challenges at the individual countries, just pulling them together. Great accessibility, available transmission lines, um, financing, um, and environmental, environmental huge one that's, that's just look at some of the big plants in, in the US to get an idea of how that goes. Um, and a lot also, a large scale is, is being diverted now to, from ground mount onto rooftop, um, and also um, uh, self-consumption, distributed generation. Thank you very much.